This is the first of five videos on Year 12 integration where we're going to have a look at something called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Sounds very grand, sounds very important, and it is, but basically all it really means for you guys is that integration is the reverse process of differentiation. That's all you need to know for Year 12 integration. That's what the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus basically means. And there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's it at its most uh, basic. So, um, just in terms of notation, you should recognise these things. So if I've got a function f of x, and I differentiate it, I get f dash of x. So the reverse process, if I've got f dash, f dash of x, if I've got my gradient function, and I do the reverse of differentiation, so I integrate it, uh, by the way, the symbol we use for, you, for integration is like a curled out S type. Um, it's like a, sorry, a stretched out S. We'll, look at, we'll use that symbol a lot throughout the rest of the A-level. But if I integrate to my gradient function, I get back to the function that I started with, the f of x. But you'll notice that there's a plus C here. We'll come to that in a few moments. So... First of all, if we're integrating polynomials, that's all you need to do for year 12. Next year, we'll look at integrating more complicated functions, but all we need to know for now is how we integrate polynomials, as in x to the power n. So let's just remind ourselves how we differentiated it. We multiply by the power, and then subtract 1 from the power. That's how we find the gradient function. That's how we differentiate our polynomial. So if we're integrating a polynomial, we're doing the reverse process. So instead of subtracting 1 from the power, we're going to add 1 to the power. And instead of multiplying by the power, we're going to divide by the new power. So basically what that looks like is if I'm integrating my polynomial x to the power n with respect to x, that dx is really important. What that's saying is it's the x that we are integrating, not, any, not the n, not any other variables. It's the x that we are integrating. That's really important to cap there. So you raise the power by 1. So it'll be x to the power n plus 1. And we divide by the new power. And you could check, but if we were to differentiate this, you'd take 1 away from the power, which would be n. You'd be timesing by this power, timesing by the n plus 1. So that would cancel, and you get back to what we started with, which should make sense. As I said, differentiation is the opposite of integration. Integration is the opposite of differentiation. And we will have a plus c there as well. That plus c is called the constant of integration. And you need to include it every single time you do some integration. And it's important. Let's just have a look at an example of why that is the case. I've got three different functions here. I've got y equals x squared plus 5, y equals x squared, and y equals x squared minus 19. Each of these functions, they all differentiate to give the same thing. They all differentiate to give 2x. The x squared plus 5, so the x squared differentiates to give 2x, the 5 will disappear. Here, there is no constant term on the end there, so again, differentiates to 2x. Here, the minus 19, this constant term will disappear and I'll get the 2x. So each of these differentiates give the same thing. So, if I was doing the reverse process, if I was integrating 2x, then yes, I would have an x squared. Remember, raise the power. So this is a power 1 at the moment. So raise that to be a power 2. Divide by the new power. So this is just the x squared, which, as you'd expect. But I need to have a plus c there, because I'm not sure which one of these it could be at the moment. It could have been that c is 5. It could be that c is 0. Well, it could be that c is minus 19. I'm not sure, but you need to have the constant of integration there. That represents the constant that could have been, um, and probably would have been there,
But if it got if it was differentiated, that constant would have disappeared. So we need to reintroduce it um, when we're integrating. So um, let's have a look at a few quick examples. Um, I've got dy by dx equals x to the power of 4. I want to find y. So I'm going to write y equals the integral of x to the power of 4 with respect to x. By the way, this is what we call an indefinite integral. Um, we'll look at definite integrals in a later video. So, raise the power. So add 1 to the power. That's going to be a power of 5 now. 4 plus 1. Divide by the new power. So divide by 5. So I'm going to have a 1 fifth there. I could write... I could write it as x to the power 5 over 5 like that. That's absolutely fine. But quite often we like there to be a coefficient in front of the um, x to the power. So I'm going to write it as a 1 fifth there. Obviously timesing by 1 fifth is the same thing as dividing by 5. And I can't forget my plus c, my constant of integration. Okay, next example, we've got x to the power of minus 5. So y would be the integral of x to the power of minus 5 with respect to x, which is raise the power by 1, so add 1, so minus 5 plus 1 is minus 4, and divide by that new power. So if I divide by minus 4, I would have a minus quarter at the front because dividing by 4 is the same thing as timesing by a quarter and um, because I'm dividing by minus 4 I'm timesing by minus quarter plus my constants in. Really important you don't forget the constant of integration. You will lose marks in the exam if you don't include them. Okay, right, next two examples. I need to find f of x where f dash of x is equal to 3x to the power of a half. So, f of x equals the integral of 3x to the power of 1 half with respect to x. So, I'm going to add 1 to the power. So, I've got a half plus 1. So 1 half plus 1 is 3 over 2. Divided, dividing this by that new power. So if I divide this by 3 over 2, plus my constant c. Now, I'd really like this to begin with. I want to tidy this up a bit. So 3 divided by 3 over 2. If you're not sure what that is, if I just write 3 divided by 3 over 2, which is the same thing as 3 multiplied by 2 thirds, and now we can see 3 times 2 thirds is 2. So this is the same thing as 2x to the 3 over 2 plus c. I do think it's worth with these questions, writing this stage out first and then doing a bit of rough working out if you need to, to get your final answer. I think it's definitely worth writing out like that. This is a really simple question. This is just a process that you go through. So you don't want to make silly mistakes and lose marks in the exam just because you've rushed to get to your final answer and not done the division correctly. So do take your time, set your working out carefully. Okay, and next example, so f dash of x is 3. Now, notice there's no power there, there's no x there at all, really. So you could think of this as being 3x to the power 0, if you wished. Because x to the power 0 is obviously 1. So when we integrate this, raise the power, so it's going to be an x to the power of 1 now. Divide by the new power, so divided by 1. Still going to be a 3 there, plus c. So 3x plus c. Which should make sense, because really if you differentiate 3x, you get 3. 
you don't really need to have the x to the power zero there. Just, I'll just put that there to show you that the pattern still works. Hopefully it makes sense to you that um, if you integrate three, you'll get three x plus the constant. Okay, lastly, two pretty complicated examples or questions where we need to be a bit more careful. Um, they certainly look a lot more complicated, but if we do some simplification first, it should hopefully be pretty simple. So this first one, I can see I've got some brackets here to expand before I can do any integration. So first job is I'm going to expand these brackets out. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times 2 over x is just going to be 2. And now I can integrate both of these easily x cubed is going to integrate to be x to the power 4 divided by 4 and 2 is going to integrate to be 2x plus my constant c so this is the answer to this integral over here I've got a bit more I need to deal with before I can do integration firstly I'm going to expand out this set of brackets so 2x times 2x is 4x squared. So that's expanding this bracket here. Now, over here, in order, just like when we had did differentiation, I want to write the square root as a power. I know that um, x, uh, the square root, is the same thing as a power of a half. So I could write this as a power half plus 5, all divided by x squared. However, I still want to simplify this with the divided by the x squared. So rather than writing it as x to the power half plus 5 all over x squared, I could just write this as two separate fractions. I could write it as x to the power of a half over x squared plus 5 over x squared. This is exactly the same as this. So I can now use index laws to simplify this. So, um, when I'm dividing, I'm subtracting the powers. So a half minus 2 so 1 half minus 2 is going to be minus 3 over 2, minus 1 and a half. And here um, I can move the x squared to the top and it will be 5x to the minus 2. Or if you're thinking in terms of index laws, you've got power 0 minus power 2, which is power minus 2. Now, finally, we can actually get on and do some integration. So, raise, uh, so raise the power, so that's going to be power 3, divide by 3, so I've got 4 over 3, x cubed. Uh, right, I've got minus 3 over 2, plus 1, so minus 3 over 2 plus 1 is minus 1 half, and I need to divide by that new power. So divide by minus one half. I'll simplify that in a minute. Over here I've got plus five x to the power to minus two plus one is minus one. Divided by the new power to so divide by minus one. And I've got my plus c on the end now. And let's just tidy this up a little bit then. So the first term is okay, that's pretty simple. Um, 1 divided by the uh, half, or 1 divided by a half is the same thing as times in by 2. So this is going to be the same thing as 2x to the minus 1 half, but it was a minus half on the bottom, so that would be a minus there. And 5 divided by minus 1 is minus 5. There we go. That is my final answer. 
Saturn, that's how we do integration, and that's a few examples um, of how we integrate polynomials.